is the Glass Cannon Network. Friday, everybody. It's time for chaos. I have a question uh, for you all tonight. A very open-ended, perhaps difficult to answer honestly question for you. Would you consider yourself a good friend? (laughs) I'll start. Yes. No, I'm not a good friend. (laughs) I'm not like uh, someone that goes out of their way to be uh, hurtful to people. Um, Not not in that sense. I'm just a, a terrible friend like you can't rely on me i don't put any effort into friendships because it's just it's exhausting and then you get older you have kids you're married there's just no time nor you're a good friend you jumped right on you were like yes best friend I will, there's there's a caveat though like i'm bad at like thoroughly like keeping the communication going like maybe it'll mm. be like a couple of weeks before we talk or text again yeah but I'm super loyal as a friend and I am very reliable. Loyal and reliable. Those are two uh, buzzwords that are often thrown out there when one speaks of good friends. Uh, You remember birthdays? Yes, because it has to, but it has to be on my phone. Okay. Because I, (sighs) not being on Facebook, like I got rid of my Facebook a while ago, years and years ago, Mm -hmm. and it's made it more difficult to keep track of birthdays. So I have to like input it into my calendar. You say you're loyal. Uh, Do you find often that your loyalty is tested as a friend? What kind of circles are you running in where your loyalty is constantly tested? I mean, no, like I, like I, I stand up for my friends. If I, if I feel like somebody has wronged them, I'll stand up for my friend. Like, I'm not going to be the person that's like, oh, you know, I'm just not going to say anything. Like, I'll say like, hey, that's what you did was not cool. You should go talk to this person. So you're a good friend. You're a classic good friend. Uh, yeah. uh, what about you, Ross? Are you a good friend? Are you someone, uh, here's here's what it is for me, like that makes time to hang out with people. Like, it would never dawn on me to be like, I should call so-and-so and see if they'd like to hang out. Uh, that to me sounds like what, what some a good friend would do. What humans do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what humans would do. What, what regular humans do. Uh, human um, beings. But, uh, I, I'll, I'll say sure that I've experienced, I think, some growth. So mm-hmm. I, I, I think there was a time where I was, where I was, I was maybe not so good a friend. And I think that maybe has to do with like growing up, moving around a ton and I would yeah. make, make friendships and then I'd move away. And it was just like, those people just disappeared. And like I, and I, and there's, until I finally, it's like, oh, you got to put in just a modicum of effort. Um, also living in a city like Chicago, which I did for a long time, it, living in a pedestrian city does so much work for you because you just run into people all the time. Yeah. It's like, I got so many friends. It's, it's, it's popping and going. And then you move to LA and it's like, I'm so, so very alone. <laughs> and, um, and so, yeah, finally, finally stepping out and, uh, and, and, just making making an effort because most of that I feel like doesn't come from like disregard for people. If anything, it comes from um, nerves and insecurity of like, well, it would be burdensome of me to impose on their time. I'm sure they have <laughs> ten other wonderful things going on. Just like relax, relax, dude. Just 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 text. You're it's fine. triggering so much in me, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. The the I guess the importance of the the pedestrian city. I never thought about that. Like when I was living in the city, it was a lot easier to do that. Now, I mean, forget it for someone who's already bad at this stuff to then move outside of the city. I got to drive some. It's just never going to happen. Uh, Kate, are you a, are you a good friend or are you just hang out with your plants and your husband? <laughs> Why would that make me not a good friend? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you're too busy watering your plants to put in the, the time needed to water a friendship. The fact that I can nurture these plants <laughs> must mean that I can nurture other things and like husband, friendship. Too, really, that is a that's a leap. <laughs> that's a giant leap. I don't know. Right, man. So you're you're a gregarious uh, friend friend zoni. I think I, I think yeah okay. yeah fuck it yeah I'm a good friend. 
If you were to text someone that you consider very close to you right now and say, am I a good friend? You think they would be a resounding yes? Yeah. Or would it be like, like, who's this? You got a new phone. (laughs) 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 Yes. Now that I am of like mid thirties, I'm friends with people who I enjoy and the people who enjoy me stay friends with me. It's like, I don't know, no more fucking around. Not just like party friends or anything like that. So yeah, you've got a quality over quantity. Yes. Rob, I, I've known you obviously since the since the '90s, but we yeah. lost touch for 20 years. But you're still friends with people that we hung out with and did theater, uh, and that is mind boggling to me. I, I consider that to be uh, an achievement. That is, uh, it just stymies me that 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 you were able to do that. Have you always just been really good at that? Oh yeah, I'm an amazing friend. Um, yeah. I will say that the people that you're referring to, I mean, there's like three to four of them. Out of that's, however many we went to high school with. That's a, still, I've like every time I've moved to a new place in life, I've lost the people. You've shed the skin. Th- I've shed the, but up, it wasn't yeah. like a, a conscious decision. Like, ha ha, see ya suckers, I'm on to my new friends. It's just, I, I moved on and I out of sight, out of mind. I didn't yeah, even yeah. think about it. No, it makes sense. I, um, I think I'm a pretty great friend. Uh, you know, I think it's just because what each of those people, you know, I feel like brings to my personal table. Right. Uh, yeah. I will say in my 20s, I was not as great a friend. I feel like in your 20s, you're you're number one. Right. All the time. Yeah. So. So I think there, there I had like a nickname for a while that was always like better deal Kirkovich or something like that, where, <laughs> where I would have plans with somebody. But then if a better deal came along, I'd be like, I can't tonight. I can't. And then it'd be found out that I, I couldn't do it because I decided to do something else. It came Better up after deal. I'd already committed to the other thing. <laughs> mm. okay. Yeah. But when I was with those people, I was a great friend, like sure. in that moment, right? I really filled the void perfectly. <laughs> um, Too bad to the ones you ditched. Yeah, I'll tell Can you what I, I don't. You tr- what, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, what are you saying, Nora? I was just going to ask Troy and, and anybody else, uh, who is your oldest friend that you keep in contact with? Like, when did you meet? At what time in your life? What grade were you in? I have a kid that I have been friends with since uh, second grade, but I'm pretty sure he hates me right now and wouldn't even pick up the phone if I called. <laughs> so that doesn't, so that's not actually an answer. Yeah, so but like he's my oldest, oldest enemy, but. Uh... <laughs> You're saying the oldest person that remembers you. I don't think he ha- hates me, but I think it's because I'm, I'm such a shitty friend that he would, if I, he'd be like, oh, <laughs> hey, nice of you to climb down from your work to call me. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I used to use ambition as like an excuse. I'm like, well, I'm just too ambitious. I got, I'm too focused on uh, my career to, to be a friend. But like, there's plenty of successful people that have really good friends. I think, I assume, I don't know, maybe not. I, I think my oldest is only one of the guys that Troy's know, that Troy knows like from, you know, sophomore year of high school, freshman year of high school, something like that. Yeah. Same. Mine, my closest oldest friend is from high school. I don't remember which year, but yeah. Right. Does my mother count? No. Um, <laughs> yes. I, uh, it was, uh, uh, I think it's a guy, uh, a, a, this, a guy I met in sixth grade. Um, and we were tight throughout middle school and I moved away and same deal, like radio silence for a long, long time. And then like years later, just found each other online, circled back, got together and it was just like, it, it's one of my favorite things in the world where you see somebody you haven't seen in like a decade and you just pick right back up. It's, it was wonderful. That's nice. And, uh, and, we're, yeah. and we're still in touch. It's, he's a lovely, sweet man. Oh, that's like my oldest, my oldest friends were like from sixth grade. She actually like texted me this morning. She's like, because I cosplay and all stuff. She's like, do you have a favorite clip in hair extension? <laughs> <laughs> the expert. But yeah, when we, uh, when we meet up in person, it's like nothing no days have gone by. I'll tell you guys what I don't respond to. Guilt trips. The guilt trip, like if you can't do a hangout and then the person's like, yeah. like on a group text, it was like, we had a great time, which would have been better if Rob had showed up, like something like that. You're, <laughs> you're going to quickly, the older I get, especially you're just like going warp speed to the dustbin. <laughs> the do not call list. Yeah. That's yeah. Not cool. yeah. Uh, how, do you guys find that you're a, a still making new friends? Oh, that's tough. It's hard. Like at <laughs> yeah. this age? Like, 
you're all my new friends. I would consider you all my new <laughs> yeah, friends. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Beyond yeah. that, yeah, that's true. Honestly, it's it's streaming with new people that that are the new people that I meet now because otherwise, as an adult, especially like living in LA, very isolating. It's no. Yeah, but how often are the, those people? You're like, hey, let's go, uh, let's go get a malt together. Let's go to the malt <laughs> shop and get a chocolate malted. Kate has never once called me for an iced coffee. Well, when you guys came into town. Yeah. That's true. We hung every day. Rob and I hung out a couple weeks ago. That yeah. was the coolest thing ever. I saw that. I, I was so I'm yeah. from I joy to my soul. I was so Nora, Nora was couldn't. invited for the record. I want everyone to I know. I was that. invited. <laughs> and she's I got a better busy offer. person. And I was, <laughs> got a much better offer. <laughs> yeah. All those pictures I've seen, I'm just better like, deal, I'm so Nora. happy for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I had, I had deal, strong FOMO. It was lovely. It was great. You know, having. Uh, children, uh, Rob, you, you, uh, do you have like friends out there that have children? Cause that sounds like it would be a good time. Yeah. I, we don't yeah, have that. That's, uh, I lucked out where I lucked out for most of my life where from college on, you know, I went to college in LA. So all of the film and theater nerds stayed in LA that I met in college. We all moved to Silver Lake, Los Feliz, Atwater, you know, Echo Park, all those places. So we were all like a stone's throw away. And I didn't really experience the whole like needing to get new friends thing until I moved to New Orleans. But but then cut to Denver, a bunch of those L.A. friends with kids have moved to Denver. So we've got a you know, there's a good like four couple slash eight kid group that's just super strong already. That's amazing. That's yeah. a lot. That sounds... That's a lot of people like, as oh. an adult. That's a solid group. Yeah. When we get I mean, it's a 16 person hang when you get all of them together. That it's a party. sounds. Mm -hmm. And then the you know the younger eight <laughs> ones great. are hanging out with each other, and the older eight ones are hanging out with each other. You know, smoking weed uh, behind the fence. It's great. Okay. <laughs> Kate, but Kate is thinking like, how many plants? Though? Right. Exactly. <laughs> well, the one that we were smoking. Who's yeah. watering oh, there the you plants? Go. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a dream. That that would be nice uh, to have friends with children. And you could like hang out. Hey, let's uh, the uh, moms and dads have a couple cocktails. The kids run around. Playing in the grass. Well, then you get into the awkward situation children. of like, are you comfortable enough yelling at your friend's kids? Yeah, that's, 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 that's be tricky. Because I think, I think we're all willing to yell at each other's kids, which is the real like, yeah, that's the Rubicon. That's like the right. That's when you <laughs> know. <laughs> what was that? Oh. Remember that short-lived pilot, like the slap. The guy like slapped the other oh, kid, and that God. became. Oh, that's right. right. <laughs> I think it only ran like two episodes. Well, uh, I've come close. I consider you guys good friends, and I uh, I hope that uh, as we continue to do this, we'll we'll have physical hangouts, and then it won't just be a, a thing we say we're good friends, but we never really see each other. Um, see you at Gen Con. Yeah, Gen Con. Let's all. Are you coming out to San Diego Comic Con? No, I was going to. They <gasps> someone asked me to, Bummer. and it just it just didn't work out timing wise. Okay. I also heard you were coming, and I. I didn't want to come. <laughs> um, but the reason I, I'm talking about good friends is because uh, it kind of connects to your to the, the good friends that uh, uh, the investigators have become over the years and, and their good friend Jackson Elias, who has brought them back together after a four year hiatus. So this is my my link between the banter and the uh, and the show. Now, for those of you at home, we haven't recorded in a few weeks. We we sh we recorded that last episode and then just uh, people got sick and the timing we had to move stuff around it was just a mess so i'm like so excited to hang out and play with you guys also because uh i don't think i said this on air i think i said this afterwards like this is the beginning of the actual campaign everything else has just been like prologue it's like now the credits roll now we start massive near and uh chaosium sent me I this fear. they sent me this sweet um box set of like a collector's edition now uh, oh, they have these sweet. new new bindings and everything I, I wanted to look up and see what's different in it but anyways I think if this hasn't been released it's going to be released soon so if you're like on the fence oh I want to get it I want to read it uh, buy the new one I'm going to give this away at some point but uh, it's it's, it's very very heavy mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, there's this other sweet book that, that just came out uh Cults of Cthulhu, Ooh. which I was going to give away until I started reading it, and I'm going to keep it instead. Nice. Also, it's, that cover is <laughs> uh, gorgeous. Listen, Chaosium, if you want to throw one of those my way. <laughs> this was the upset. only copy they had. Um, but, uh, you know, there's some uh, some scenarios in the back that'd be fun to run. Okay. Anyways, um, ch check out Chaosium.com. Buy some of their shit. Uh, in the meantime, we are, we are really jumping into this... Uh, 
for real tonight. And uh, so I don't want to. I don't want to waste any more time. I want to jump in so we get some uh, some progress done tonight. I've been sending you guys emails over the past couple of weeks, even though I haven't been recording. Just kind of reminding you about um, development stuff for your investigators. There's a lot of stuff that we um, hand waved uh, on last week's episode, just because I figured we would do it between sessions. Uh, one of those things is that you can train skills over like uh, three and four month periods. I can't remember, it's three or four months. And since four years have passed, you're able to train like 12 different skills or one skill 12 times or two skills six times each. So I let you guys roll that off air and, and some of you become better in certain skills. Um, and then uh, obviously there was some sanity gains based on uh, different things that you did to uh, get your minds right. But we are we are we are now all in New York, and uh, as I mentioned last week, over the past few years, even if you haven't even kept in touch with each other, you've always kept in touch with Jackson. If you're not the type of person that is good at keeping in touch, like me, uh, it doesn't matter because Jackson is the type of friend that is good at keeping in touch. And so you've all developed a, a, a friendship and a kinship with him over the years. Um, and, and he sent you letters detailing all his crazy adventures uh, as he uh, as he globetrots uh, hot on the trail of his next story. Um, he actually stayed in Peru after you left to finish writing his book, a book that would uh, come to be called The Hungry Dead. And uh, even though everything that, that Jackson thought he knew about the world uh, came crashing down around him, just as it did uh, all of you, he omitted those parts from the book, focusing more on the historical connections between the, the Tiwanaku and the Conquistadors, and he presented the cult of the Karisiri as a purely human evil. Uh, probably thought it would sell more copies uh, if it was believable. But he stayed abroad when you all returned to your homes. And evidently something in that time uh, that he spent with you in Peru spurred him forward toward his next work that he's told each of you over the years is something quite big. He's on to some, something huge. So recently, you all received a telegram from him and uh, it came from a boat at sea where he said he has information concerning the Carlisle expedition and he needs reliable investigators like the four of you to help him. So he asked you to meet him in New York on January 15th, 1925. That's four years after your adventures in Peru. So you all make your way to the Big Apple for Feruz and Carter, easy trip, you're in Massachusetts, hop on a train, steal a car, you could be there in a few hours. Uh, for Margot and Vaughn, takes a little bit longer, but you all make your way there. And as you do, uh, some of you uh, spend some time looking into the Carlisle expedition. You all had probably heard about it. It was a big thing in the news, um, but I would say base knowledge was that you knew it was this expedition uh, that perished somewhere in Africa a few years ago but you spend some time digging into uh, newspaper articles, going on Reuters and uh, going through like whatever your local paper ar uh, archives are to read about it. And this is what you learn. You learn the Carlisle Expedition was led by a 24 year old uh, millionaire playboy uh, with a bit of a reputation named Roger Carlisle, who uh, was funding and leading an archeological expedition to Egypt that departed New York in 1919. Um, the principal members of this expedition were Sir Aubrey Penhugh, a noted Egyptologist, Hypatia Masters, a uh, beautiful society girl and photographer, Dr. Robert Houston, a fashionable psychoanalyst, and a man by the name of Jack Brady, who was Carlisle's like, right-hand man. The uh, expedition members, uh, with the exception of uh, Sir Arby Pen Penhew, uh, departed America, sailed to London. That's where they met up with Penhew, um, who's like a, a master of all uh, things concerning ancient Egypt. They spent a few weeks uh, in London, and then they departed for Egypt. Using Cairo as their base, uh, evidently this expedition performed several short desert excavations. Um, an important find was rumored to have been found at some point, uh, but they didn't comment on what it was to any of the reporters. The principal members then departed for Mombasa, Kenya, and quickly went inland to Nairobi. 
At the beginning of August, the expedition headed into the wilderness and then vanished. In March 1920, uh, villagers told authorities uh, in Nairobi of a party of whites that were massacred somewhere in the area where the expedition disappeared. On hearing about the missing expedition, Roger Carlyle's sister, Erica Carlyle, uh, traveled to Africa and hired a search party. After weeks of looking, Erica, with help from the local authorities, found the remains of the expedition. Fingers were pointed at some uh, tribesmen, some Nandi tribesmen in the area. Uh, a trial was held, um, and it was heavily implied that perhaps this massacre was racial in motivation. The tribesmen were found guilty and then hanged. Uh, the expedition members were all declared dead, and the incident was forgotten. Erica Carlisle then returned home to New York. You all arrive in New York to meet up with your buddy Jackson. Last night, on the 14th of January, he called each of you and asked you to meet him at the Hotel Chelsea, room 410 at 8 p.m. tonight on the 15th. He didn't sound like himself on the phone. He sounded anxious, maybe a bit frightened. He didn't sound like the Jackson you've come to, to know over the past four years. He was cryptic and he hung up before answering any questions or going into any further details. So now, imagine the skyline of Manhattan. It doesn't look like it looks today. There's no Chrysler Building or Empire State Building yet in 1925. Only the uh, Woolworth Building is uh, easily recognizable as the tallest building in the city. Maybe we see an aerial view of Central Park and uh, uh, horse-drawn handsome cabs just taking people away from the teeming crowds of the city. The electric signs of Times Square are there in 1925. Uh, cut to, you know, deep into Brooklyn, we see the, the lights of the Wonder Wheel and the Cyclone roller coaster uh, in Coney Island. Those were there. Um, maybe we see the Staten Island Ferry uh, and it's closed right now because the waters of the East River are still too frozen uh, from storms that have been ravaging the city in early January 1925. It's actually been a really harsh January historically. And, and what's cool about masks and a lot of these uh, Cthulhu adventures, uh, it's historical fiction. A lot of the stuff that they, uh, the research that they do is what has, was actually happening at the time. So there was a huge two-day snowstorm uh, on January 2nd, 1925, and then another one uh, 10 days later on January 12th that left uh, all of New York in a complete sand standstill. It shut down transportation lines and uh, things like the Staten Iron Island Ferry can't even move through the river. So as you're making your way to the Hotel Chelsea, there's snow still piled high on the sides of the streets. Um, let's say there's a light flurry as well outside. It's cold, you're all bundled up, everybody has layers of clothes on, clothes on, and you head to the Hotel Chelsea, 23rd Street, between 7th and 8th Ave, still there today. Um, you all arrive in the lobby one by one like you did at the Bar Cordano so many years ago. Last week we ended by me jumping right to you walking towards the door, but let's talk about this meeting in the lobby. Who's the first to arrive? I feel like Carter would have gotten there first because he's pretty pumped. Yeah. He, he's like... He, uh, he didn't expect to uh, ever form the connections I think that at least he felt he formed uh, in Peru as sort of a lone con man. Gotta look out for myself. Type of thing. Um... <laughs> But then, you know, you fight some fat vampires and a mummy destroys your buddy's sanity and then suddenly, you know, find yourself thinking about him uh, years later. So the Carter, Carter's trying to play it cool, uh, but uh, is fairly giddy. Is there, a, is there a bar at this place, Troy? Um, no, it's like a, it's, it's a hotel um, that uh, has been turned into long-term apartments. You know what? Actually, there is a bar. There's a restaurant in the hotel. Um, so there, there would be a bar. Okay, so Carter's, Carter got a drink to settle the nerves. He's, you know, every once in a while, he's like, just play it cool, Carter. Be cool. So he's all pumped up like a yeah. kid on Christmas morning. Exactly. Uh, who rolls in there next then? Margo can roll in, I guess. 
I don't know if it's like still snowing, so like maybe she's got like a long yeah. coat on and she kind of like bustles in, like kind of disheveled. <laughs> um, and yeah, sees Carter and goes over to him. Frown line sour. sour. <laughs> oh, hello, Carter. How are As you? I live and breathe. You look great. You too. You look wonderful. Oh, um, thanks. He pulls out a flask and he's like, I loaded this with a Pisco Sour. Oh. You know, for old times' sake. You want a, you want a swig? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> then he immediately runs out of stuff to talk about. <laughs> I know, all right. <laughs> Pisco Sour should have been your nickname from your time there. Like, oh, true. if it is an old Pisco Sour. Everyone just calls each other Pisco Sour? <laughs> <laughs> Pisco Sour Tillinghast. <laughs> Uh, so while you are drinking outside liquor at the bar, uh, who else rolls in? Uh, I think... Oh, no, please. Oh, okay, um, I think Feyruz rolls in. And you, just, you see nothing but, like, a, a silhouette hood comes up over her head as she walks naturally towards a bar. <laughs> and having thoroughly trauma-bonded with this mm-hmm. group of people... The moment she she first sees uh, Margot and kind of like her eye eyes start to like well up with tears, but she holds them back and she just runs over and just hugs her without saying a word. Margot's probably like, because aren't aren't like uh, Germans and like Europeans kind of like not like standoffish with their emotions a bit. Sure, for this story, why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, she's like, oh, oh, hello. So nice to see you. Pats you on the back and maybe he's a little stiff. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's good to see you. And she <laughs> she turns towards Vaughn and she kind of hesitates for a moment and Carter. then goes in for a hug. Yeah, well, Carter Carter's now oh, Car- over 40, uh, so <laughs> he's Carter, lost sorry. five appearance points, <laughs> uh, which have put him at 15. So, <laughs> yeah, maybe while you're hugging her, you just see this horrible visage just like, like coming to frame. <laughs> hey, bring it in. And then she comes in to his ear. It's so good to see you. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for at least saying it in a way that one person could hear. <laughs> and then, well, isn't uh, this a charming little uh, scene? Oh! And, uh, um, <laughs> it, was, it was like striding in from. From the uh, from the entryway, uh, c- cigarette still still uh, smoking in his in his in his fingers. You see, in a in a very very dapper um, coat, probably trimmed with fur, but very like uh, very very tasteful, very understated. Um, like taking off taking off a hat and dusting off snow. Um, Tillinghast, old boy. <laughs> As what up, player? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, let the players play indeed. Um, um, and he walks in and extends a, a stiff uh, hand to you, because as a as an Englishman, hugging was out of the question. Oh, Carter! Carter goes full bear hug. Come here, you limey. <laughs> you just see uh, Vaughn's face smashed up against the mask as he as he goes in. Yeah, the mask kind of jiggles. Fairs will assist in a group hug. Seeing, especially after seeing him uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, yes. Mm. Ah. Ah, just so. Yes. Come here, frown line. Get in on this. Oh, oh okay. I have a, had a little bit of pisco sour, so I'm okay for a hug. Okay. Another hug. <clears throat> yeah, it's going to uh, be interesting. You you shared this this horrible experience in Peru, but you, it brought you together, and you've had this time apart where uh, you, you needed this to kind of recover, but it must be the type of thing you think about every day, the, the pile of rags rising up, the, the larvae on, the, on your face trying to get in, Larkin's floating head, de Mendoza melting. So as much as you want to get away from it, you're still all drawn back to each other, drawn toward it. I would Whatever. say Feyruz is very much obsessed with her academics and with this experience. Yes, I mean, um, Vaughn has sought the countless hours of, of study and faith-seeking and unpacking his, his mind to a, to a confessor, um, what, is, what he has experienced. 
Margot's definitely been like trying to run from it, but not being able to type of thing. Yeah, Carter definitely has thought about it a lot and it's really changed his behavior or, or has started, the, there's tiny sparks of the potential of changed behavior, which is a big deal for him. But I feel like we wouldn't, you know, I don't think any one of us would be like, anyway, that mummy. Like, you know, I think there's a lot of, <laughs> I think there's a lot of like, un, you know, there's just kind of like an unspoken. Like an thing. elephant in the room of just like, do we talk about it? Do we talk about the puke pit? Uh, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> yes, uh, rather a bit chillier than the last time I saw you lot. <laughs> it's snowing. Yes. Yep. Have you been you, watching um, any movies? Any movies, anyone? Oh, I saw this one where it was just a train coming straight at the camera and everyone in the theater ran out. They thought it was gonna hit them. I was like, I was, was like, you the one where the girl shit. was tied to the tracks? <laughs> no, it was just a train. It was just a train. <laughs> it was one. just a tripod set up and a train and people thought the train was coming. And I was like, you don't know existential dread. <laughs> they do not. I have been watching movies and practicing my American um, New York accent, and I've gotten so good at it that it sometimes it bleeds into my normal accent. I can hear it. Yes, <laughs> isn't it crazy? Yes. Oh. Um, I saw a uh, saw a, uh, a moving picture not too long ago. Um, uh, believe it, uh, it was Nosferatu, a symphony of terror. Yes. <gasps> oh, the yeah, part listen. where he grabs in the shadow. Mm, yes, couldn't get the couldn't get the image out of my mind as I was making the crossing. Uh, so much of that happens on a ship, don't you know? Um, mm. But but it was you know it's not 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 terribly frightening. Yes, I didn't find him too, too scary. We've we've seen worse, am I right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> visually, it was beautiful. But what do they have to drink at this establishment? Uh, yeah, you want Crisco sour? Yes. <laughs> Did you bring this here? Yeah, I made it um, two weeks ago. So it's just been sitting in this. I've been sipping it slowly. And I go up to the bar and I'm like, my man, um, now I'm of course familiar with the, uh, with the mashes of our, of our highlands and uh, local, local spirits, but I, I'd like some of your, uh, some of your Kentucky gentlemen's uh, best. Uh, whiskeys, whiskeys for all. Ooh. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Pause for bourbons for each of you. Maybe a toast. Yeah. Uh, hey guys, to uh, getting the band back together for whatever reason. I'm sure we'll find out. Clink, 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 clink. Margo like throws the whole thing back, puts the, like kind of slams the thing on the counter. Just goes, ah, yes. Um, should we go see the man? Glasses yeah, so clink. You guys look at each other, you know it's time to go up and see your old friend. So now we cut to the four of you walking that long hallway towards room 410. And now the four of you are standing outside of Jackson's door. He doesn't have a, 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 a home, he just kind of bounces around from hotel to hotel because he's only in New York for a little while before he goes someplace else on some adventure. So this is a place where some people stay long and other people uh, are only here for a couple nights, like a normal hotel. Um, what do you do? With a deep breath and an intense look at everyone else, I kind of gesture that I'm about to knock and wait for the, the Everyone's ready? No, Let's do it. I knock on the door. Gum, 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 gum. You knock on the door, and there's no response. Everybody give me a listen roll. Ooh! Yes. First you go. roll First of roll. the day. First roll of the day. Where's Maybe you got some new oh. listen the scores. I rolled kind of high on that. What's... Oh, you know what? I'm going to use, uh, I rolled a 68 over 65. I'm going to, I'm going to use some of that luck. Use some of that luck. Oh, we didn't do our luck improvement roll today. Oh, we didn't. Um, so mm -hmm. let's, uh, we'll do that right after the listen roll. Uh, so you're going to use some luck to get yes. a, uh, just remember the 68 when we roll it later. Um, 
All right, so you have a regular success. Anybody else have a regular, hard, or extreme success? Nope. Healed. Okay. Um, uh, I'll get back to you. I uh, forgot to open roll 20. Here we go. <laughs> ah, got you're it. fired. Yes. It's been too long, guys. This is the problem. I don't understand all the <laughs> things that are needed. All right, Four we're doing listens. Listen. I think you have a decent listen, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Let's listen to this dice. You have a 63. Uh, yeah, I, I got it. I got a regular success, 55. Okay. Two regular successes. All right, now let's get that luck roll out of the way just so we see if anybody uh, gets any luck here. And again, this was a number you need to fail. There's my luck. Okay. No luck. Sick. Definitely failed that. Ooh, got it. Ooh, nerds. Then Nothing D10. Sweet, I got seven points. I got six points. Great. Bump, 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 bump. No answer. You kind of all tune your ears in to listen to if you hear anybody approaching the door. Um, anybody inside? A, a television on? Nothing. No response. All right. Check the door knob to see if it's locked or not. You check and uh, it is locked. Do we have oh. the right time and day? Pull out your pocket watch. 8.01 p.m. Um, one of the, it's still low, but one of the skills that I worked on in the past four years is locksmith skills. Me as well. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> uh, who's got the uh, the juicier locksmith? I mean, you I can both probably try. Rob. <laughs> I mean, it's not it's not huge. It's like a four, it's a forty three. Oh, you definitely have the higher one. All right, Carter's like, uh, give me. Uh, hold on one second, guys, and he just reaches into his. Oh yeah, so I'm sure we can uh, talk to the concierge. Or, I, oh, like I see. Hand him a hairpin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. This will work. I, you know what? I'm good. And he pulls out like a little leather like pouch. That he kind of like, or like an envelope, and it kind of like unfurls, and there's all these tiny little. Oh, the hairpin gets tossed <laughs> yeah. over her shoulder. <laughs> I missed you guys. <laughs> all right, let's see what old Carter. It, it's been a while. Let me just give this here a little jiggle. He starts uh, playing around down there, so to speak, and I'll sort of Ooh. turn around and act as lookout. <laughs> uh, I rolled a forty-five over forty-three, so I'm going to go ahead and spend those two points of luck. Yeah. Two points of luck to turn that into a success. Yeah. Knock on the door. No answer. Look at the time. It's 8.01, exactly when you were supposed to meet him. Something doesn't feel right. Let's pick the lock yep, and immediately. break in. So you stick your tools in there, tunk, and you open the door. As you open the door, you realize you're pushing up against something, and you see, like, a... Uh, papers and 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 pillows on the floor that are kind of blocking your way in it doesn't seem like they were purposely put there but you have to actually push past that to even get uh into the room and you see that the room is completely in shambles there are drawers overturned uh the the mattress towards the back of the room has been stripped and flipped over and you see two other things that jump right out at you throughout all of this uh, this disarray in the room. You see a couple of men climbing out of the window onto the fire escape and they're dressed in like shabby suits and they both have a band around their head that just has this long strip of red flannel dangling down from it. And they both have long knives in their hand, almost like machetes. The second thing you see, laying on the floor in the middle of the room, is Jackson Elias. Mother. His stomach has been completely torn open, <gasps> and his intestines have been pulled out of his body and just thrown about the room. Oh. He also has blood gushing from his forehead where it looks like something was cut into his flesh. The men at the window see you and just start to take off. Blackguards! I draw my gun. In it. We are in it. So Those there mother. is a thing in Call of Cthulhu. There's a whole chapter on it that is called 
Chases. The Chase. And we are in a Call of Cthulhu Chase. It is a a little bit complicated. I think I know it pretty well. Um, So I'm going to walk you through it. And we're going to see what happens here. Um, Obviously, there's a lot going on. Your good friend is dead. But the killers, potentially, are getting away. So, in a chase, first, everybody make a constitution roll. So, you want to roll under your constitution for a success. If you succeed, there will be no change to your movement speed. If you fail, you will take a minus one to your movement speed. And if you have an extreme success, which is probably pretty hard to do, you'll get a plus one to your movement speed. And movement speeds will determine uh, basically how many actions you get in this chase and uh, where you start the chase, uh, how fast you can uh, advance on these people fleeing. Um, So let me start with you, Margo. Margo, what did you roll for your con? 67 over 55. She had too many swigs from Carter's flask. Was not ready for this. Okay, so that's a fail. So, Margo, you normally have a movement of eight, which will now be kicked down to a movement of seven. Um, Carter, what did you roll? Yeah, I failed too. I got an 89 over 65. Actually, too, my movement is seven now because I am older, so it's actually six. Oh, no. Yeah, me too. Brutal. Oh, God. So, same with you, Carter. Uh, Carter, yours was a seven. It was a seven, yeah. So now I'm to six. Okay. Uh, great, Vaughn. Ah, oh, so frustrating. I, I rolled a 49 over 45 on my con. Ugh, it's brutal. Can you spend luck on that? Can I spend luck on that? Sure. I don't see why not. In that case, yeah, I'll, I'll spend... Yeah, four points to yeah, try I'll to get the f- these... Yeah. Absolutely, I'll spend four points to try to get the jump on these these dudes. Okay, and your speed is normally an eight. Uh, a regular success means it will stay at an eight. Uh, failure would have brought it down to a seven. You need an extreme success to have brought it up to a nine. Uh, what about you, Feyruz? I rolled a 17 under 80, so I'm going to spend six luck points to make that an extreme success. Jeepers, Feyruz. Oh, right our superhero. <laughs> yep. Uh, you desperately needed somebody uh, to succeed here uh, to even have a chance to try and catch them. I just lost my sweet dry erase marker. All right, so your movement will go from an eight to a nine. This is such a fucking cool system, and it's meant to mimic uh, those classic Lovecraftian stories. Uh, I think it's the Inns- Innsmouth, something in Innsmouth, Shadows, Shadows over, over Innsmouth, has yeah. a very famous uh, car chase scene. Uh, one of the examples they use in the book is like a boat trying to get away from Cthulhu, and like the rules make total sense. Um, so even though there's going to be some technical stuff in here, be sure to uh, kind of describe how this is all working out. But basically, now there are there are locations. The location is like the foyer to the bedroom to the fire escape, to the alley below, to the street. And everyone is going to be in different locations based on uh, a couple of different things. There will also be uh, hazards or barriers between locations. And you're going to have so many actions each turn based on your movement speed to be able to do stuff. Uh, Stuff can be... uh, moving from one location to the next. Stuff can be trying to navigate a hazard. Stuff can be attacking one of these people. If you're in the same square or location as one of the uh, enemies, you can attack them with a melee weapon. Uh, If you want to use a ranged weapon, as long as you can see them, you can attack them. Uh, But that takes up one of your actions. So, let me go back to my uh, cheat sheet here. Uh, Wow, some of you are very, very slow. Margot and Carter are way behind. All right, so this is what's going to happen here. Um, I'm going to say that one of these uh, gentlemen is in the uh, fire escape. They're out the window on the fire escape. Uh, Feyruz is going to be up front in the uh, foyer, two locations behind. So uh, you always start, you generally start with the fleer being two locations, uh, the slowest fleer being two locations ahead of the fastest pursuer. So in this case, it's Feyruz in the foyer. That's going to put um, Vaughn at the door and then Margo and Carter are still gonna be in the hallway. Um, So you guys are gonna have to uh, move pretty quickly all right now i've got a couple other people i've got to move around here uh if they're there then this guy is gonna be here and this one's out of it 
Okay. Just have to bear with me. But basically, we have uh, one of these uh, men is the fire escape. The other one saw you and uh, jumped down to the uh, alley below. Um, and that's all you see right now. All right, great. So we've placed everybody. Now we move on to the slowest person, the slowest move gets one action. Everybody else gets one plus the difference in move to the slowest person. So for example, Vaughn and, uh, excuse me, uh, Carter and Margo with a, a six, you're only gonna get one action each. Uh, Vaughn, you have an eight, you'll get two actions. Just keep that in your mind, two actions. Feyruz with a nine, you're gonna get three actions. Um, and then, um, my guys have some actions as well. What I say you had Vaughn to, uh, two? That's right. Okay. So everybody has different actions based on, uh, their relative movement speed. Uh, and now we go round by round in dex order. Um, da -da 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 -da. so I'm just going to walk you through this. Feyruz, you said your gun was pulled out. So yep. that's going to move you up. And you will go first, Feyruz. You have three actions. So right now you're in the foyer. You can move to the bedroom. That's one action. Uh, but then you've got to navigate your way out the window to the fire escape. Also, where there is a person on the fire escape that you can see, you can spend an action to just fire at them. I definitely want to close in on the distance. So... If, I'm assuming it'll take two actions to do that? Yeah, so it'll take one action to move in the bedroom, mm -hmm. and then you need to navigate the window. So basically, uh, this is a hazard. You need to use a, a, a climb roll. And whether you succeed or fail, you're going to make it onto the fire escape. If you fail, I just have to decide if you're going to take damage from that. But either way, you will lose 1d3 movements actions, uh, or 1d3 actions if you do fail it. If you succeed on okay. your climb, you get out there and you'll still have one action left to attack. Let me see what my climb is here, but I, I mean, I have to do it. I'm, I'm one track mind. I'm, I'm trying to close in the distance now. And you have luck too, so. Now, can I, can I potentially use a navigate roll instead of the climb roll if I'm navigating my way? Oh boy, <laughs> that's, uh, that's gross. Uh, what is your climb? My, cl <laughs> my climb is a 20. Uh, what's my your jump? My navigate is slightly higher. Uh, let me see what my jump is. Uh, good question. Because that's what Where you can is do that? is like bargain with me. Like, well, I'm going to jump. Now, if you jump, if you fail a jump, I might say you take some damage. Whereas if you fail a climb, you just kind of stumble. There's been many out. nights where They're I've had the to same. navigate. They're the uh, same. So you know, you know what? <laughs> I, listen, we're in what episode nine? We're going to we're going to do high risk here. High I'm risk. Go for it. High risk, high reward. Go for it. We're going to do. We're going to go for it. So uh, yeah, I'm going to try to close the distance, and as soon as I see, I'm going to try to fire if I've got that one action left. Okay. Yeah. Now here's the thing: is worst case scenario you're just going to make it onto the fire escape and lose a certain amount of actions and end your turn but at least you'll be right next to one of these guys yeah all right so what am i rolling right now uh roll a climb roll a climb do it nope <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, all right so you use one action uh to move into the from the foyer into the main uh, bedroom area you use a second action to move on to the fire escape you fail that you won't take any damage um but you will lose one d3 move actions roll a d3 or a d6 and divide it by two and okay. if you lose multiple move actions it carries over to next round i rolled a two so that's a one okay great all right so uh you lose your final action, but you'll have your full complement of actions next round. Here's right. one thing to keep in mind. When there's hazards, I, I should have mentioned this before, I don't think it would have changed what you were going to do. You can uh, give up a certain amount of movement actions to take a bonus die. So you could, if you had three movement actions left, use all three of those and get three bonus dies trying to make a skill. Um, Oh. So I, I should have told you that beforehand. It's up to you if you want to uh, lose uh, an action next turn, uh, should you not succeed. It's up to you if you wanted to burn that extra action, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, we'll do it next turn because okay. we're, we've already done this. Let's, right. uh, let's keep, we'll it keep moving. moving. Okay. All my dry erase markers aren't working. Uh, there we go. Feyruz is on uh, the fire escape. You see this guy, uh, like I said, pretty 
uh, shitty looking suit and has this like headband, but like a homemade headband with this long red flannel strap hanging down. Um, got a great image I can actually uh, it's show just you Rambo. guys. It's just Rambo. <laughs> it's just Rambo. It's John um, Rambo? Say true first blood. <laughs> Let's see if I can find, uh, there's a great image from the book of what's actually happening right here. Um, this, these skills, I was rolling my extra skills today and I was like looking at climb and jump and being like, I'm not gonna like, choose these yeah. to boost. So mm -hmm. who am I gonna climb and jump? Literally the first thing we're doing. The same. <laughs> right, I'm never gonna use climb and jump. Now you know. All right, I can't find it, but anyways, it's a very cool picture. Um, I think they'll see it on stream, but you guys won't see it. But anyways, uh, moving in Dex order it is now Margot's turn. Margot's got that uh, amazing 80 Dex, uh, but you only have one action. Um, where you're standing in the hallway, uh, you basically can move into the apartment, uh, or you can try and fire from there, uh, but it's just such a long shot and now Feyruz is out there, it wouldn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, and like, for like realism, I guess, I don't think she would have had her draw gun drawn, especially being in the back of the party. Yeah. So I feel like that would be some time. So yeah, she's just gonna move into the room. All right, so Margo is going to move uh, into the foray. I'm just gonna say you're right near uh, Vaughn here, because uh, even though you're two behind, it's just ridiculous. I want to make sure you guys are involved. So Margo is in there as well as Vaughn. And now, uh, Feyruz, you see down below, uh, there is another one of these men. You saw two of them on the fire escape. One of them is down in the alley below and uh, he's trying to like navigate these snow drifts that are down there. There's probably, the, there's like a the hotel kitchen, uh, the back door to the kitchen is down in this alleyway. And so this trash all piled up that's been covered in snow. So he's attempting to navigate uh, these snow piles. Um, so I am going to uh, spend a couple move actions here to get some bonus die to see if I make this. Uh, and he does. So uh, he navigates uh, the snow pile and gets out onto the sidewalk. So you just see this guy down below just running around the snow and he gets onto the sidewalk. Um, and if you look far enough ahead, it looks like there's another one of these guys that has run around the corner. So there are three of these guys with these weird headbands. Uh, two of them have practically got away, but there's one still right next to you. Unfortunately, two of your friends are very, very slow. So the guy next to you, it's his turn. He's got a crazed look in his eyes and he is going to swing at you with his machete. Ooh. Okay. Um, with one of his two actions. Let me see which one this is, okay. Uh, all right, so it's gonna be a brawl. What would you like to do? Do you want to dodge? Do you want to fight back? Want to do some weird maneuver? Uh, I mean, I could either dodge, I could brawl back, or can I shoot him? <laughs> um, yeah, you can't quite, I don't think you can, uh, you can fight back with a ranged weapon, if I'm remembering okay. correctly. Um, but you can do, you can do a maneuver as a, uh, as a, in fighting back. If you have like a specific goal in mind, you can describe what that goal is and you would resolve it uh, as a fighting maneuver. I'm going to use, okay, so I'm going to use my brawl skill and using the butt of my gun, as soon as he comes at me with a machete, I'm going to try to like deflect it away from me. Okay, um, great. All right, so you're going to try and uh, maybe even knock it out of his hands. Let's take it a step further. Yeah. If you're able to succeed on this, you can use the power of your, uh, your gun to kind of knock this weapon out of his hands. All right, so um, you roll your uh, brawl and I will roll mine and uh, let's see what happens. I got a regular Ooh. success. I rolled a 10. Yes. A 10, and what is your build, by the way? I should have asked. My 10 under 34, um, so that's a hard success. That is a hard success. Um, what is my, I'm sorry, what was the question? What, what is your my, build? My build. Well, you're trying Where, to do a maneuver that would come into play here. Build is at the top of this thing, It's yes. in the combat tab. Yeah. In the combat, thank you. Build is one. 
build is one, all right. Uh, his build is one as well, so there'll be no uh, bonuses. But anyways, you succeeded on that. Um, so since your goal was to knock away the machete, you succeed that. Boom, the machete falls down and it just like cling, 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 uh, hits the ground through the fire escape. Um, so he doesn't do any damage to you. And instead he tries to navigate this ladder to get away from you with his second action. Let me see what he needs to roll. Uh, yeah, fire escape, narrow, rickety, covered with ice. Um, it's been loosened from its fixtures a little bit. You can feel it shaking from the wet weight of these guys uh, jumping down. It's shaking badly uh, as you two are, are fighting up there. Um, so he's going to uh, attempt to do a climb roll and to get down the ladder. what level are we on? Uh, you are on the fourth, fourth floor. Yeah. Fourth floor, okay. All right, so he's going to attempt a climb roll here. It's got a pretty good climb. Uh, and he succeeded. Um, so he climbs down and he is now in the alleyway, one oh. location away from you. Let me move him over there. You feel the uh, fire escape uh, like jostle and bounce as he jumps off the ladder below. And that, uh, that is the end of his turn. And now it's Vaughn's turn. Vaughn, you're in the foyer. You're two locations away uh, from where Feyruz is, is on the fire escape and three locations away um, from where this other guy is in the alley. Um, and you have and I, two actions. I mean, I, I'm gonna, I want to close as much distance as I can. What? Would I, would I spend both of those just to draw level with Feyruz out there? Yes. Um, the only thing you have to do is navigate the window, um, yes. and that will affect how many actions you have left next round should you fail it. Um, so what do you want to do? Climb through the window? You want to be a little more daring and jump? Is there a way to jump? Um, hmm. <laughs> I mean, part of me wants to, like, cut him off by just, like, jumping into a snow drift out, yes. out the window, going all the way out. Oh, jumping way over straight the through? Yeah. Uh, if that's what you want to do, I I, uh, I will certainly allow it. Um, the, the, the risk of failure will cost you. Yeah, understood. I mean, it, it sounds insane, right? It sounds mm -hmm. totally uh, unhinged. Yes. So let us let us not forget that even after all this healing and, and self reflection, I still only have thirty six sanity. Um. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you're gonna have one action move into the be bedroom. Your second action is to try and jump straight out the window and like acrobat your way uh, past the fire escape. Uh, a failure on this could uh, could hurt, especially where you're on the fourth floor. That's right, but there's snow and stuff out there to break. There is snow to fall, right? You see a much cook downstairs dump a pot of boiling water right where you would land and it you're, melts the snow. And you're kind of a newly, you're a Catholic now, right? Mm. Yeah, yes, quite. Yeah, that's, uh, the Catholics always win. <laughs> that's what they say. That's yeah. proverbial. That's right. And they feel terrible about it. It's great. Uh -huh. Look it up. Uh, all right, so give me a jump roll. This is insane. Okay, Do sure, it. fine. Here we go. Um, I think I think what this is is... Uh, Vaughn sees this scene of horrible gore, like the intestines spilled all over the floor, and is like frozen there, like blackguards as people are coming through, and then it's like, and see, here's here's them like going down the fire escape. It's like, um, oh no, no, over the top, and just like run, 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 leap, and oh man, is that a failure? <laughs> oh no, <laughs> Vaughn. <laughs> Okay, all right, so... Uh, my odds were terrible, but... What's your jump score? 20! Oh, jeez! He swept up in the moment! All right, so that's bad news bears. Uh, we knew it was sure going to be is. high risk, high reward. Uh, Go ahead and roll 2d6 damage for yeah, this well, fall. This is where I get taken out in the first day. <laughs> <laughs> Or do I? I only I rolled two d six and I rolled a total of three. A total of three, and what are your total hit points? Nine. Nine. Okay, great. Um, so that's still, so, that's, that's still quite bad. It's pretty bad fall. A third of yourself. 
a third of yourself just I mean that would make sense you basically it's not like you jump out and just ah, splat from four stories you would die it's more like like Plinko from the prices right you're just like don't 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 and you're like hanging as yeah. you fall and then you hit the ground pretty hard I'm imagining this almost like one of those Jackie Chan maneuvers but done totally clumsily where he leaps and like grabs like a fire escape uh, <laughs> Um, ladder, but it like breaks loose of its moorings and like slides down. Shunks, and he like, <laughs> right. and he like whoa, falls yeah. off that. And and but it but it decreases his momentum enough to where when he hits the the snow and 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 garbage pile of old like cans and Chesterfield cigarette boxes, he uh, <laughs> he's not totally um, pulverized. It's one of the Jackie Chan outtakes that we see during the credits. At exactly. The end of one of his movies where it went wrong. This is very much like credits of Super Cop. And yeah, exactly. He, uh, oh, he fell off a train. Yeah. It's funny. I've gone. I went on and on before we started this about how I'm not going to run a pulp campaign, and it's just it's a pulp campaign. Uh, mm -hmm. As you come flying out there heroically. Yes, so yeah. uh, God, but now blood. you're you're both in the alleyway, and uh, you see that the main road is about 20 feet away from the base of the step ladder that you just careened down. Uh, snow everywhere that you're going to have to navigate um but he's down there as well so you guys are in the same location now give me a a, a d3 roll because you failed that to see how many actions you're going to lose next round oh uh, two two okay yeah. all right so you're you're going to be you're you basically you're going to lose your next round and it makes sense you've made this big daring oh, yeah. thing you fell you're, you're like on your back ah what the fuck did I just do? <laughs> Feyruz, you're just watching this happen. <laughs> but imagine it if it had gone well, right? Can, you, can <laughs> we just imagine? Well, that's I mean, why we take those risks. And we just see you jump, and that's yeah. it. Right. You're gone. <laughs> see ya. Just uh, ran right out. Amazing. Uh, all right, so now I believe we wrap it up with Carter. Carter, you're in the same predicament as Margo. Uh, I'm basically giving you a freebie to just get in there uh, if that's what you'd like to do. Well, yeah, I think Carter sees Vaughn just haul ass and jump through the window and then just hears this horrifying, like, rattling of iron as he finally clumps to the ground. <laughs> so Carter was going to, like, run in, and then he, like, stops and he looks for a second, and then he turns around and I want to run to the elevator and go down. Oh, okay, great. Uh, I didn't even think about that. Uh, okay, wonderful. All right, so Marco goes into the room. You turn around. I'm going to say the elevator is one location away. Um, you hit it, and you're in the elevator. Okay. So and you want to go down to the ground there? Button. Yeah, right, maybe then there was a... There was actually probably an elevator operator, so I'm like, down, 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 down. <laughs> oh, that's very cool. Okay. Yeah. All right. Where's the fire, bud? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My buds and uh, intestines, another guy jumped out of the window. Let's go down. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap, is this guy's Daffy. Let's go down. <laughs> and uh, now we'll do uh, round two right after this word from our lovely sponsors this week. That was the fastest hour uh, in time for chaos history. I, I can't believe how fast that went by. Uh, we were we were talking in the little break we took about uh, we I looked at the the combat damage flowchart uh, on page 122 of the Keeper Handbook, and uh, I thought about this as you were doing it, but I wasn't 100 percent sure. Uh, but if your damage is less than half your maximum, you take regular damage, is what you did. More than half your maximum is a major wound. You fall prone, and you got to roll a, a con roll, and if you fail that, you go unconscious. More than your maximum hit points, which could have happened on 2d6. 2d6. Outright death. Game over for that character. So you could have died. And as Rob so eloquently put, he's like, well, yeah, when well, you jump out of a fourth story window, and it doesn't work out. Uh, the, the math adds up. The math yeah, adds it, up. It does add up. In my defense... <laughs> I think yeah, Vaughn has been living a very cosseted life over the over the intervening years, and the ur the 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 yearning for action of like of like pushing down these accumulated um, stresses and traumas with with thrills and 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 unto the brink of death is has been building up for a while. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and it, it, it certainly played out there, and, and the consequences could have been uh, pretty awful. We would have had uh, two deaths on our hands. Well, there's more uh, chances to die. Let's go. Yeah, that's true. Let's We're go. only in round two. It's just, it's crazy the way this worked out, but this afternoon I, I pre-rolled uh, these guys' uh, con saves, and two of them got extreme successes. So the fact that Margot and Carter aged and their movement speed went down, and they both failed, it makes it almost impossible for them to catch up with them, but then I didn't think about using the elevator or that one of you would just jump out the window. So uh, let's see what happens. There's still one of these guys here. Uh, it's on you, Feyruz. Feyruz, you uh, had three actions available, but how many did you lose? Just one going into this round? Just one, yeah. Just one. All right, so you have two actions available to you? Mm-hmm. Great. What would you like to do? You are on the fire escape. The, the ladder is there if you'd like to climb down, uh, or you could jump. <laughs> can I shoot the guy that's on the ladder? You absolutely can. That guy is down in the alleyway. You see Vaughn is like laying on his back. Like, oh! you, it looks like he's breathing, which is good, at least for right now. Um, but that guy is in the alleyway uh, with Vaughn and you've got a, a clear yeah. shot on him. All right, Later. yeah, I'm going to shoot first and then like move later. Okay, great. Um, do, 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 do. What do you want to do? You've got, do uh, you want to do a full... John Adam, boom, 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 or just one shot? Uh, let's do, no, let's let's fire it all off. Unload that clip! Unload it! Listen, I'm going full balls to the walls, and if I die, I roll up a new character, but I'm living on the this, edge. This let's whole, do this. This whole group has been has spent four years being, like, stretched out like a slingshot, and we're just <laughs> now exactly. firing off. This isn't yes. time for calm! It's time for chaos! All right, <laughs> three oh, shots. Each come with a penalty <laughs> die uh, where you're unloading the clip. We're not unloading the clip. Okay. We've, you have six shots of you. Uh, yeah, there's six shots. I know. I keep fucking that up. but uh, okay. so, so you could do this uh, twice, but you're still going to take a penalty die on each shot here. Hey, all it takes is one or two to hit. All right, well, let's let's do this. Something to keep in mind, uh, you know, because I've, I've been paying attention to people uh, who write YouTube comments and on the subreddit, mainly for yeah. like rules corrections. Uh, Rob, you got an extreme success on an attack roll in Peru. Extreme success on an attack roll is like max damage, depending on if you're using a blunt weapon or a blade or a gun. So uh, if you're ever really close to an extreme success, spend that luck. It can uh, it can do crazy damage. So you're saying I could take that and apply that to one of these rolls now. Four years the, later. the hand is off the proverbial chess piece, but we, I think we all uh, got gotcha. you. Okay, all right. I think I we took all my hand off. That's from fine. This, yes. Four years past. Whatever. Hello. Um, <laughs> but hopefully that knowledge can help one of you. Uh, Ferus, take your shots. All right. So I'm rolling my firearms. Firearms. Yep. Okay. Penalty die for each. What's the penalty die? Remind me again. Uh, I... The the roll the double digit one twice. Um, but you keep the uh, single digit one. So you could roll a 71 and a 31. Um, but you gotcha. always, yeah, you roll that one twice. Or roll two of these if you have some extra D100s, which a All professional right. like yourself probably does. All right. I rolled, okay, so taking that, uh, that into consideration, uh, 41 under 67. Okay, um, and what was the other one? Higher, I don't remember. Higher, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's a fail on the first shot. Um, you need to, you need to, um, you take the lower of the two on a penalty. Yeah. Die. That was the lower one. That was the, you know, but I mean the, the worst one you take on a penalty die. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm saying that was the worst one. Both rolls were under. I'm, both oh, rolls both were roll. under. Oh. That was, okay, that was the, that was the winner though. I cop, copy. All right, Sorry, so that's my, a hit. my, my, I communicated that like super poorly. That's okay. Um, um, the, the, the number you want is 41. Right, okay, great. Under so 67. that is a, a hit. Give me uh, damage. Okie dokie. So that is a uh, 1d6. 1d6, okay. Ooh, man, you need an extreme or a nice three hit pop. Ooh, that sounds like a one. a one. Yep. On that okay. First one. That's all right. Hey, the first one hit. Um, okay. Second one. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, second one. S same thing, penalty. Yeah, penalty die. That's the drawback of unloading the clip, but it's worth okay, it. I didn't make that second one. I got okay. the third one. Third one, yep. I feel like this would be a good one. Yeah, 37. 37, okay, great. Give me another D6 for the damage. Six! 
Yeah. Six. There you go. Making up for yeah. lost time. So boom, boom. Echoes throughout the alleyway. Snow drifts just flying from the bullet that missed. Um, and you still have one action left uh, if you'd like to try and navigate uh, this ladder. Now, here's the thing. If you fail the climb, there could be some damage here in addition to uh, losing the movement action. So you might want to wait till next round, spend two actions to get the bonus die on the climb. It's up to you, or you can do something else. Uh, how, how bad does he look? Uh, he looks pretty, pretty beat up. You see just blood starting to stain the snow beneath him, but uh, he's not down. I, you know, my climb is so bad. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait and okay. get the advantage on that for next turn. Yep. At least you've got him in your sights here. Yeah. Um, all right. Now it's gonna move to Margo. Margo, unfortunately, you're still in the foyer. You turn around and you see Carter has run to the elevator. I knew he was gonna. She turns and she's like, "Oh, I knew so we could do that, but I'm already in the room." And then can't hold him up. And oh god. So. I mean, like, so no one is on the fire escape anymore except for us. Like, the baddies are down. Right, there. just Feyruz. Vaughn's laying on his back in the alleyway next to this guy who was just hit by two bullets, and Feyruz is standing there with a hot gun. Uh, you could move Feyruz into the bedroom. is so effective and, and powerful. I, I just imagine her after this, like, taking to whatever camera is nearby and just like, I'm surrounded by idiots. <laughs> <laughs> No, because everybody has their own specific, like, I suck at so many other things. Oh. But I appreciate you. Okay, I appreciate you. Um, t -t 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 yeah, I mean, you kind of, you can get into the bedroom, you have a clean shot on Feyruz. Oh, oh, okay. She'll <laughs> uh, turn um, for Well, here's the good thing, is like, if you use your one action to get into the bedroom, you could ostensibly peek your head out the window and start taking shots down. Next round, there might be a penalty or something, but like you could get in the action next round. This is kind of the drawback of uh, being further away. And um, getting down the fire escape is one action. Getting down, yeah. Whether you fail or, or not, it's 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 only one action. All right. Um, a locked door would represent a barrier, in which case, like, if you fail, you don't get through. But things like getting out the window, climbing down the ladder, and navigating the snow drift, those are just uh, hazards, which if you fail, you just lose actions. You might get hurt. But. All right. I'm going to run up to the window and then decide how I'm going to climb down with my great climb score on my next turn. When what is your climb, what is your great climb score? It's twenty, and I'm wondering. So, like, if I don't climb my one turn and save it for my next turn, can I double up on that one and get the bonus die since I only have one move action? Around? Actions, you know, it's funny. Actions don't carry over, but you can get penalized into the next round for. That's actions. not fair at all. It really isn't. <laughs> um, you know, all there's right. an optional rule for ranged attacks um, that I wasn't going to invoke, but we can talk about it next round, where basically you can take an attack without using an action and just take a penalty die for it. Um, but if you were, for example, Feyruz taking a penalty die, she would take two penalty dies on each attack. So it gets a little wonky. We'll talk about it next round. Um, all right, so it moves on to these headband dudes. Uh, Feyruz, you see this as well as Vaughn laying on your back. You're trying to adjust to everything. You you look down. Bloody head of John the Baptist. You see six of them. <laughs> the first guy uh, just rounds the corner uh, out past the sidewalk, and he's now uh, gone. Um, and it is the guy next to you, Vaughn. He sees that you are really not a threat. So he's going to uh, oh, just try no. to get away. Oh, okay. oh, oh. We have you surrounded. <laughs> hammer. Uh, this snow drift is going to be, uh, basically I can either use strength to try and push through these boxes or try to, uh, the snow covered boxes, or try to use jump to jump over these. Uh, the first guy jumped. This guy is going to use strength to kind of power his way through. So I'm going to roll a strength roll, and yeah, I'm just going to do a strength roll. Uh, crack die. Uh, made it. Um, mm. So he gets past. He gets through the alley onto the sidewalk, 
and there are people all over the sidewalk so he is going to attempt to uh like yell at them to get out of the way and try and intimidate them uh and he succeeds with a nine under 25. so he uses two actions and he gets to the road as well uh vaughn you just see him kind of zip around the corner The dice were in my favor here and not you guys. Let's see if there's anything left that you can do. It now goes to Vaughn's turn. Vaughn has no actions left this round because of the failed jump. So just describe to me what happens there as you're laying, staring up at the fire escape. Right, I'm just like creatively swearing. It's down there, yeah. uh, Oh, by the roasting grill of St. Lawrence. As I'm like always trying to get to my (laughs) feet. Just like... (laughs) <laughs> and, and as he's maybe like disappearing towards the street, he's like, we have you surrounded, oh boy. Nope, okay. And um, it's like trying to get to his feet, I guess, if that, if he can even do that. Um, and uh, looking up at the, at the window that he, that he just like foolhardily left from. Yep, you're able to kind of struggle to your feet and you're trying to get your bearings. You hear gunshots from above and you just saw this guy next to you that could have just used his uh, actions to probably easily kill you, Uh, Mm -hmm. but instead he just darted past, pushed his way through a snowdrift, and then yelled at people on the sidewalk to get out of the way, and has now turned the corner and is gone. It now goes to Carter. Carter, it is your turn. Well, you tell me where this elevator is, because it could be a whole turn of me just passing small talk with the elevator operator about the unseasonably cold January we've been having. Are you here visiting, sir? (laughs) Half-faced, sir? You know, there's a lot of snow for 1925. (laughs) Yes, we had snow back then. Uh, The elevator takes you to the lobby. Um, I'm going to say you didn't have to use a move action from that. You could go lobby to outside uh, from one location to the next. Yeah, he wants to just tear ass out the front door. All right, uh, you zip outside. Give me a spot hidden. All right. This is, of course, not Carter's forte, spotting hidden things. (laughs) I always ask you guys to roll the things you're not good at. Nope, real bad. (laughs) Didn't get Mm. that. Mm. Troy, you never. (laughs) <laughs> it was over by like 60 points. Over by, so yeah, you don't want to burn uh, 60 yeah, luck. Not, especially since I don't have it. Okay, well, um, let me see here what is going to happen. Basically, I'm going to withhold some information from you. Uh, you look and you see a car and uh, there are people all over the place. You're kind of, you're looking and you you hone in on this car because there's like a commotion where you see people like uh, screaming uh, to get out of there. They're moving to the side and a guy runs and jumps into a car and you see his long headband and he gets into a car with what looks like two other guys and the car takes off down the street. All right. Um, Do I get the license plate? If you had hit the spot hidden, uh, I would have okay. given you the license plate. You said, New York, the son of a biscuit. No, it's N2. There's only four numbers because there's so few cars. <laughs> it's it's yeah. still covered in snow. One, no, two, I, three. F- oh, I don't know. I was looking for the license plate because I have the license plate had you hit the spot hidden. Oh, nice. It um, but yeah, I mean, there's so many different ways that could have went. And I just rolled so well. And you guys rolled so poorly. Uh, mm. But that's okay. Ooh. <laughs> That's okay. You're these, not a good friend. These cups. Sorry, I did. <laughs> yeah, you're a right, yeah. You're a terrible friend. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Pulls off into the night, swerving down the icy road. Carter, you're just standing there. We could cut to uh, Feyruz now at the top of the next round. Feyruz, as far as you know, this guy has just run around the corner. Do you try to pursue or are you just like... Oh, there's one guy that hasn't come into the no, car? No, you, the guy that was right next to Vaughn that you hit twice, he ran around the corner. On so you're the gonna run! Give, 
Are you gonna? But I'm saying you're gonna climb down. Take your time. You to know climb what? Down. F it. Let's do this. All right. Give me a climb check. This is gonna be so. Oh, but I used. Did I get advantage on it because I waited. I, I all used, right. So you've got you have got three actions this round. You could mm-hmm. ostensibly use all three actions to get two bonus die if you wanted, or you yeah, could just I'm use two actions. It. Yeah, it's up to you. I, I'm gonna I'm need. I'm gonna need the advantage on this because right. my climb not so good. <laughs> Or you could just jump off using the body of Vaughn to break your fall. That's true. Um, He's got a couple hit points left. Here's the thing. My jump, also not great. So. <laughs> All right. Just for uh, for shits and giggles, give me uh, give me this roll, uh, and you roll the the, uh, the tens die three times and take okay. the, the best one. All right. Three times. No. So bad. <gasps> I rolled a two. Nice. <laughs> That'll do. Uh, extreme success. Uh, you uh, slide down there like uh, Dan Aykroyd in Ghostbusters. Uh, yes. And Vaughn was just getting up, and you land with your ass oh. on him, and he, oh, he falls down. <laughs> um, but as you get down, you look down the end of the alleyway, and you just see a car peel out, and you realize they're they're in the wind. But that's, do I have one more action? You do have one more action. Can uh, I run towards where that other guy was Yep, running? you can run out to the sidewalk. Um, we'll say that that guy, by using strength to push back these boxes, has cleared a pathway so there's no more hazard there. With your final action, you can move from the alley to the sidewalk. The sidewalk is full of people that just dispersed when that dude yelled, get out of the way! Um, but now they're starting to come back together. So you just come out to the sea of people and see the car peeling off down the way and then you look over to the left and you see Carter standing at the entrance to the hotel. Can I, can I, I don't have any more action. Can I do like a spot hidden to see like if I notice anything about the car or notice anything specific about people that we didn't notice? Yeah, give me, uh, give me a spot hidden. Okay. I rolled mm, a 62. I know my spot hidden is high. Under 80. So this is a uh, regular success. A regular success. Okay. All right. Pretty good. Pretty sneaky, sis. Um, uh, let's see here. I don't think that's going to be good enough to know the license plate, but I'm going to say that once I find it, uh, it looks like a black Hudson Touring Roadster. <laughs> I know that model. You know your cars. Uh, no, a 1915 around. Hudson Touring Roadster. Uh, Roadster. Um, very, very popular car at the time. Uh, license plate was like NYL, and there was a number, but you didn't catch it. Okay. But you see your buddy I'll Carter take there. Take what I can get. Jackson's killers are gone. <laughs> And poor Margot is left in the bedroom, and you yeah. just look down at raspberries, at ra- raspberries, uh, all over Jackson's face. Raspberries, and like she lit a cigarette while she watched all of that, and just like smoking it, looking out the window. I go over Vaughn's, like laying down, take the cigarette out of his mouth, and start smoking. It's all crumpled. It's like folded. <laughs> We're gonna have a ninety degree <laughs> angle. As these cultists, uh, no, as these men uh, get away, uh, with I'm sorry, cult- what, Troy? Culty headbands. They're pretty clearly uh, some sort of weird uh, society. As they speed off, the full brunt of this experience starts to weigh on all of you. Uh, give me a sanity check. Oh, oh man! That wasn't even a floating head. <laughs> I had this. Well, this our friends' floating are head. spread around the room. This is my cheat here yeah, for the cool. uh, the chase. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's the foyer the bedroom, the fire escape, uh, the alleyway, the sidewalk, and the road, and wow. different little hazards along the way. But uh, what a it's a pretty cool system. Specifically shaped Success. whiteboard that is. Yeah, well, it's, my wife got this for me. It like sits in front of your desk, and so you can make little notes. It's great for gaming. Wow. Uh, definitely spend some time with the chase rules, because I think it's something that's going to come up often through the game. A lot of times it helps break up the, uh, I don't want to say the monotony, but it breaks up the action a little bit uh, to try something different. Um, there's there's a, lot of, a lot of moments when you're just running after things or running away from things. Uh, did anybody fail their Sam? Maybe. Nope. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. We can't use luck on these, right? Right. Yeah. 
I failed by three I points. have a 92 sanity. I rolled a 99. Oh! Oh! Oh, oh no. Yeah, no. I think that's extra bad, isn't it? Uh, that's super bad. You know what? Only, I think it's only a hundred if your if your sanity is that high is a okay. fumble. Uh, Michael in the chat, let me know if it's 99 as well. I think it's only a hundred. If it was a fumble, it would be max sanity loss. Um, <gasps> but I think 99 where your sanity is so, I think it would have to be under 50 for a fumble to be a 96 to 100. Otherwise it's just a 100, I'm not 100 been sure. So I, I think mean, you're, you're okay. Yeah, you're like a Buddhist monk at this point anyway. Right. You have so much sanity. Uh, who else failed? Me. Okay, Vaughn. Sitting pretty. Sitting pretty, <laughs> you've seen worse. Just broken on the uh, side. Yeah, yeah. I, have, I have other fish to fry. Feyruz? Oh, I passed. Okay, so Feyruz and Vaughn take zero. Uh, Margo and Carter, give me a D4. You're gonna lose one D4 uh, sanity points. I don't know if I've done this so far, but I should be having you guys roll your sanity loss. Lose yeah, two four. sanity. Oh, max sanity for poor Carter. Um, you oh, were I really excited it. about this. Carter, Carter was, I mean, I think we'll see when we, I'm assuming I mean, he's gonna wanna go back up to the the apartment, but uh, you know, Jackson had told him if, if when they saw each other, he'd read the manuscript of Carter's book. That Carter had been working on, uh, the one he kept pitching to Jackson all those years ago. Carter decided he was going to do it himself, and uh, they had a good pen pal thing going on. Very supportive, Jackson. Yeah. He's giving you notes on your writing. Yeah. Um, what's the plan here? Uh, Margot's in the room alone. Vaughn is is shaking off uh, this this pain. Uh, Carter, you see Feyruz and you're standing there and you realize that it's, there's nothing you can do. Do you want to go back upstairs? What do you want well, to do? Yeah, I think Carter yells and is like, what's going on with Vaughn? Because he can't see, right? It's around the corner. Vaughn, um, Vaughn, are you all right? Right as rain. Smacks him around. <laughs> right, right as rain, Ms. Gibran. Uh, <laughs> forgive me, ever, ever so foolish, just... Couldn't, she reaches couldn't. into his pocket, takes out a cigarette for him, lights it up, gives it to him. Ah, mm. oh, many thanks. Just couldn't bear to see those horrid blackguards make good their escape after what they did. Who the hell oh. were they? Looks over, uh, over at um, Carter. Scarcely, yeah. Rarely, rarely in, in New York that I've seen headgear like that outside of the Ziegfeld Follies. Peculiar, indeed. <laughs> Carter's like, let's, you know, he kind of comes around the corner, sees them, kind of commiserating. He says, let's, let's get upstairs. Let's, let's see our friend. Yeah. Well, I know we're in New York since your gunfire hasn't seemed to have attracted any attention whatsoever. Surprisingly, none. If you guys walk through the lobby, um, you see there's a bit of a commotion. Um, so people know something is going on. So they did hear the gunshots. Mm -hmm. um, maybe the uh, the concierge is on the phone. Um, you would think probably talking to the police. Um, you guys head back up the fourth floor. All right, you get there and uh, Margo, are you just standing over Jackson's body? Um, maybe not standing over his body. She probably looks at it and is looking around the room just to see, make sense of the mess and the chaos. Like, is there anything here that can help identify like who they were or what happened? Yeah, you're, you're looking around. I mean, the first thing that jumps out at you is this, this horrible um, cut in his forehead. Uh, obviously his intestines are all over the place, but if you, if you take a moment to, to look at the body, you see that this uh, cut in his forehead is, is very purposeful. Um, and so let me show you what it looks like. This is a, a bit gruesome, uh, just to warn you here. Um, it looks like that. Oh, it's like a design. Whoa. Ooh. Yeah, if you, uh, you know, there's, there's blood pouring out of it, but as you look closely, you see that it, it's very um, purposeful uh, in the way that it was like, carved into his flesh. I draw this in my notebook, in my little sketchbook. 
Um, and there's, yeah, continue looking around the room until my friends come back. Okay, so the rest of you come upstairs and you just see Margot drawing something. Look um, at the, look at this for his forehead. It's it's like a purposeful design, like carved into his, his forehead. Has anyone guys, we, have oh, we seen ahead. anything like that? I am, and Vaughn has been, I think, communicating with Elias in with his newfound um, interest in sort of like mystical matters, and um, I, I, I want to roll a cult and see if I can identify this, which is one thing that I have trained in over these over these years. Ooh. Okay, yeah. Um, give me uh, give me an occult roll. All right. Ah, sweet. I got a hard success. 15 under 30. Success. All right. So you start staring at it and um, it looks like uh, at first glance, like a set of brackets, maybe around a flower motif, but there's something uh, that uh, almost reminds you like not of a a brackets and flowers, but like a, a mouth not unlike the Karisiri mouth in a way, like the grasping mouth of a lamprey. Uh, maybe there's a vague similarity um, to the tattoo on Larkin's chest even, but you're, 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 you don't know how much of this is new knowledge and how much of this is just like flashbacks. You're looking at it and you just flash back to walking into Larkin's hotel room and seeing with his, his shirt wide open, uh, flashing at... Um, De Mendoza transforming in front of your eyes into the Kari Siri. And then you, you shake that away and you think that that this is some sort of cult symbol that you would need to spend time like at a library researching, but you think it's Kenyan in origin. And and two of those um, men that were fleeing the scene appeared Kenyan. One of them just looked like you, um, but the other guys appeared Kenyan. And so you think, okay, I'm going to file this away. If you spend some time in the New York Public Library, if you wanted to, um, you could do some research on what this is. And Margot's got a, uh, if you look over at her, she's got now a perfect representation of what's on your, your poor friend's head. Yes. Ross, did I lose my mind for a bit, or did did you jump out of the window? Hmm? Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, bloody foolish, I suppose. Um, one can only look at such a wretched scene, not wish that there be some measure of vengeance by any means. She um, just takes like a very long drag out of her cigarette and just stares at you directly in the eyes, because she remembers from Peru how you turned against us momentarily, but came back and went insane and all that. She's got her eye on you. Yeah. Desperate times, desperate wrestlers, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, yes. Um, bloody, bloody lot of good it did. And only nearly broke my back. But, um, if not for, uh, not for the shooting of Miss Gibran, we would have given them no scuffs at all. I was trying to get the license plate of that car that got away, but I only got a little bit of it. I don't think it'd be, or would prove to be useful, but... Some, <sighs> but this There may be carving. something here. There may be something here. It, it seems to me that um, Mr. Elias and I, in our uh, correspondence, in our uh, epistolary mode over the past several years, spoke about magic circles and s- sigilisms of ancient mystics and that lot always goes in for this sort of thing, and we can't shake the feeling that this is rather like a Freemasonic compass or some sort of marking of. This is, I dare say, it's some sort of signature. Are Whatever you all. suggesting that this is some sort of work of some secret society? And she looks a little suspiciously over at <laughs> Margot. Just that. Some sort of a secret and mystical. <laughs> anti-Rosicrucian sort of brother. Uh, though what, uh, what, what, what I'm seeing here tells me it has a rather a Kenyan origin. 
Whatever it is that Jackson had knowledge of. If they were to take these sort of precautions to make sure that word didn't get out, what do you suppose that they were trying to conceal? Yes, perhaps he was onto something that they bloody well wanted to snuff out. Well, they were looking for something in this room. Maybe well, they was it in it. this room or was it within Jackson himself? Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Not within, but I mean the knowledge of whatever. Oh, okay. oh, oh, yeah, right. yes. oh gosh, right, <laughs> yes, of something. course. Uh, Carter, Carter's like, all I know is that we don't have much time here before the, the, the cops show up. And this, I've had just a few uh, run-ins with NYPD and it's not pretty. So let's let's look around, figure out what we can get. And yes, get let's out of 23 here. skidoo out of here. Yeah, so so Car- and Carter's having some trouble even looking down at Jax's the intestines thing. Uh, Troy, a little intense. Uh, yeah. so he doesn't want to look at that, uh, especially considering uh, how he feels about this man. So he he's sort of using that as an excuse to start rummaging through um, Jackson's stuff, his luggage and stuff. Okay, yeah, I mean, the room is in complete disarray. You do get the sense that they were uh, perhaps looking for something. There's papers strewn about, and he's a writer, so he had, like, uh, research and stuff. Uh, it's hard to tell if they got away with anything, if they were looking for one thing in particular, but there's a lot here. Um, I say we grab all the pages. Grab anything that you think Jackson wrote, and we'll look at it later. All right, give me a spot hidden, everybody. Woo woo! My best. Let's go. Okay. I think I just read it. So oh, I rolled fuck. a seventy-seven <laughs> under something. I think my spot hidden is an eighty. Let me see. Oh yeah. Yeah. I got a regular success. Regular oh, success? No way. Yes, my spot hidden is an 80. 77 under 80. So just two, a regular. Two regulars. Nice. I got... Oh, one cream, no sugar. I got an 8 under 25. Nice. I okay. got That's a, a hard. Um, I got a 15 under 75. That's an extreme. All right, so an extreme, a hard, and two regulars. Okay. Coming right up. You start grabbing <laughs> things, and, and a lot of it doesn't look important, like uh, at first glance at least, but you want to be uh, thorough, so you start grabbing things. But um, Vaughn, something jumps out at you. Uh, it's this uh, uh, typewritten letter without an envelope uh, from someone named Miriam Atright. Um, Amen. Who is like it appears a, a, a librarian at Harvard University um, and it's addressed to Jackson uh, in care of his publishers um, let me go ahead and show you that letter mm-hmm. um, and if you'd like to uh, give it a read there Ross uh, see Harvard no less dear Mr. Elias the book about which you inquired is no longer in our collection the information you seek may be found here in other volumes. If you will contact me upon arrival, I will be most happy to further assist you. As always, Miriam Ashright, Harvard University, etc., etc. That was written on November 7, 1924, so just a couple of months ago, uh, and it was sent in care of Prospero House Publishers uh, on Lexington Avenue in New York City. Um, so that kind of jumps out at you. Uh, hey. And you grab that along with some other things. And uh, you see another letter. Uh, Carter, you see something that also jumps out at you. Strange. Uh, it is a another letter uh, f- addressed to Roger Carlyle from oh. someone named Warren Bassart. The text is in a neat, very precise hand. Um, 
Couldn't give that a read there. It's just going to uh, make me Rob. struggling to read it even more impressive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, guys, look at this. This, is to, this isn't even to Jackson. This is to Mr. Carlisle. This is from Cairo, Egypt, March 3rd, 1919. Years ago. Your lo- Dear Mr. Carlisle, your lawyer informed me that you seek certain knowledge of this land in a distant past. I believe I can aid you in this regard. Inquiries in the old quarter have identified one. Is that an F? Faraz. Faraz Najjar. Faraz Najjar. Yes, some voice is telling me how to pronounce this. <laughs> Faraz Najjar. Uh, in the street of Jackals, who claims to be in possession of, quote, singular curios, which he believes will be of great interest to you. He is prepared to part with these items if a suitable price can be agreed upon, and I shall endeavor to make sure that matters are arranged. To your satisfaction, yours, uh, M. Is that a Monsieur? Uh, M. Warren Bassard could be a Monsieur. Uh, could be M. a Mister. In that case, or, it could be Bassard. Bassard. Uh, uh, Warren's not super French, though. If you think about it, Warren. That doesn't work. <laughs> Warren. Warren. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it could be a Monsieur. Uh, Bassard is definitely uh, Frenchish, um, mm-hmm. but strange. You know that he was researching the Carl expedition. This is the reason that he called you here um, and has a letter from this guy. Six years old. Addressed to Carlisle, yes. Singular curios. I mean, 1919, that's before we all even met. Yes. Yes. What, what, what do you suppose this curios is? Some sort of uh, ancient Egyptian artifact, I presume. We must find out what it is. Yes. We got to find out everything that Car- that uh, Jackson was was into in terms of Egypt, whatever he was researching in Egypt. I dare say I'd love to be speak to that Miriam Atright. Perhaps I can arrange a, a telephone call. Mm-hmm. As you're standing there uh, going through everything, you do eventually hear sirens. Um... You've also been seen <laughs> coming into and exiting the building. What's your play here? Wow, 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 wow. I don't do great with cops, uh, guys. No, we should probably... Is there like a service elevator or like a, like a back stairway? Uh, Fire there, escape? There is a back stairway. Yes, maybe that's better than trying to do the fire escape again. Oh, yes, absolutely. I just think we should 23 skidoo out of here. Yeah. Yes, so, and as you, we gather things like, uh, um, Juan crouches next to Jackson's head and you just hear him muttering, Requiem eternum dona ace domine. Amen. And he crosses himself and heads for the door. So Thank you, Vaughn. And as Feyre's absolutely is not Catholic, <laughs> doesn't know the hand <laughs> gestures, but appreciates what's going on. So your goal here is to try and sneak out um, so that you don't get implicated in this. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, this is a tricky move. Um, where Carter and Feyre's were seen and coming in and going, you, you know, I'm going to say this is going to require a group stealth roll. Oh. Um, mm. Just to see... <sighs> What happens here? So, who has the worst stealth? I've got 37. I'm, I have 56. Okay. I, I have 24. Ooh. I um, got 60, baby. I trained that shit over these four okay. years. Maybe maybe I can offer an, an, an alternative or a, or, a, or a twist on the plan where if, um, since maybe, maybe if I go out the other way while people go out the back, and just try to put on Daffy Charming Foreigner and uh, and and throw off the cops if they if they question me on the way out. Okay, so you want to take th- see what happens and go out there so that your friends can escape. Uh, mm-hmm. I could do that. I like that. Although I'm, I, I I'll go with Fawn and just just it's a couple is always less mm. suspicious. Yes. Okay, uh, so Carter and Margot, you're gonna sneak out while they run a, an interference. 
Um, yeah, I, I, I unfortunately have what you would call a uh, recognizable features. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's best that uh, I get away from any witnesses. Uh, all right, so Carter and Margot, you, uh, Margot spots a, 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 like a back stairwell. You guys go down that while uh, Feyruz and Vaughn uh, jump into the elevator. You come down to the lobby, and right when the doors open, there's two uniformed uh, police officers uh, standing there. Uh, they have their hands on their hips, and they're like, uh, excuse me, uh, sir, madam. No, I say, just the chaps I was looking for. Do you have oh. any idea what the noise is about this place? I mean, I Terrible heard New York. fuss about. <laughs> city yes. that never sleeps. City that always screams and explodes more like. What the <laughs> bloody hell is going on? Yeah, Absolutely we, just preposterous. We had uh, we heard reports of uh, some shots being fired, so we're we're uh, we're checking uh, checking every floor here. Now, Feyruz, you were seen downstairs, and Vaughn, you were pretty beat up from that fall. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh no. Just so is bleeding. What is going on around here? <laughs> He's just oh, my God. Just about like, to honeymoon. <laughs> yeah. Nothing to. Mm -hmm. Uh, Where's the bar, my love? <laughs> oh yeah, have to have to get down uh, to um, find out. Wait, is it's is prohibition currently on? Uh, I think it is prohibition. Um, yeah, oh, oh, that, was that, bar, uh, that bar was. Where yeah, is yeah, that? Wait. We have a reservation, oh, right? my love. <laughs> yes. When did prohibition <laughs> end? 1933. Oh shit. Oh yes. Uh, well, we the hotel yeah, Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway. Yes, well, uh, simply must dash. The, the missus, you know, uh, has, uh, has to has to see the sights. We have a reservation, you know. Mm. Uh, wh may I ask what floor you were coming from? Uh, the the reports were f that it came from an, an upper floor there. And are you all right, sir? You look a little rough. I'm afraid I took a tumble on the ice, old boy. A uh, uh, terrible bit of business. Um, we are right. on our honeymoon. Mm. Uh, let's just say my mind was elsewhere. Uh, so, um... <laughs> Took, took a bit of a slip on the on the ice. Um, um, clumsy me, only too shame making. Um, <laughs> He's so modest. <laughs> come on, come on, come. We have we have our reservation. Yes, yes. Um, first flush of love. You know how it is. Um, right, old boy. Give him a little elbow in the <laughs> elbow in the ribs. Um, do you want to do a fast do talk do. or a charm? Yes. Here? Uh, I yes. want to do a fast. Talk. Oh, you got to roll for this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, fast talk or, or charm. Uh, you're both you're both very charming. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> I, 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 I regular succeed. You regular succeed. Okay, I'm uh, gonna rely on that. I'm. I don't think I even need to roll my my. It's both charm and fast talk are so low. All right, I think that uh, a regular regular success here is enough for them to be like. Uh, uh, all right, uh, just uh, in, enjoy the rest of your night. Be careful out there. We, we don't know what's going on. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. <laughs> all right. <laughs> As I don't have any moon. And they get into the elevator and just kind of eyeing you suspiciously as the doors close. That's and you're close. out. <laughs> Too close. <laughs> well, um... Shall we make our reservation, dear? <sighs> Good God, I don't want to see any more authorities in this business. Yeah. You go outside and uh, reconvene with Margot and Carter. Um, We're just nervously smoking cigarettes in like an alley. Just chain smoking. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. All of us. <laughs> Took you long enough. Um. You see there's a group of people now, like they're pointing, it's like, you can see, oh, they ran around the corner here and they hopped into a car, and, uh, and uh, another car pulls up and a uh, uh, a big guy, uh, heavy set guy, uh, looks like he used to be pretty muscular back in the day, but he's a little older now, so a lot of that muscle has turned to fat, and he's got a dark complexion, bl brown, slick back hair, he just looks like a cop, uh, his nice suit on, um, he, he comes on, and uh, one of the police officers that you talk to, uh, Vaughn, and uh, Feyruz comes out and uh, kind of ushers him inside. Can I do a listen check to see what Scuttlebutt is being talked about. 
from yeah, anybody we're... that's been standing there. Give me a give me a listen check as you're trying to like eavesdrop. I rolled a twenty-seven under sixty-five. Okay, um, it sounds like the guy that just showed up's name is Lieutenant Poole. Um, he's a plainclothes detective, uh, and the officers are uh, twenty-seven under fifty-five. Sixty-five. Um, all right, you heard something about like there's a body upstairs. It's quite a scene. Um, people, people have said that there was some uh, a bit of a hubbub, and people fled the scene. Um, and so the the detective nods and then goes with him in to go investigate the scene. We should go. Yes. Yeah, wow. Yeah, let's get out. Let's let's be feet. Slowly, slowly, blend fading into the crowd. Yes, yes. And you fade off, and uh, we just black out from this this horrible scene as uh, Lieutenant Poole and his officers uh, take in the crime scene. Where's everybody staying? Out of curiosity, do you have friends? Or I know some of you have money. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of different options. Like uh, they, the book even goes into great detail about. Uh, uh, if you've got a lot of money, you could stay at the Plaza uh, Hotel on Grand Army Plaza. You could stay at the Waldorf Astoria on Fifth Avenue, 33rd Street. Oh, you know Street. Vaughn's rolling deep. Yeah, yes. so I think wherever I, Vaughn is. I'm in one of those spots, and um, I think I might invite you back to a, a hotel room that looks like something out of like a 20s movie in its mm -hmm. opulence. It's like a hotel room with a piano in it. Oh, thank goodness, because I had no way of getting back tonight. <laughs> There are boarding houses, like if you really don't have a lot of money, you could, where everything is shared. Uh, I'm staying at the Y. Oh, I'll take I'll take a couch <laughs> over at uh, Vaughn's villa. <laughs> yes, do you have in two the couches? Sky? <laughs> oh yes, um, couches, love seats, ottomans. We can no, sleep head works. to foot. Well, if you care to, Fräulein Sauer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't know your Germanic ways. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, no funny business, do you know? Yeah. No funny business. <laughs> We've encountered much worse. Um, so you all like imposing upon Vaughn and his wealth? Yes. Well, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not Here's his wealth. Thing. It's like on, his... on paper, literally on paper, like on my character sheet, my credit rating is very low. Even though my situation is that I'm married to this incredibly rich person, right? So, right. Uh, so I always just figured any time that Carter kind of blows off, he's kind of tied, his hands are kind of tied. Uh, so I just assumed he was going to be staying at some, you know, you know, like a Best Western equivalent. So he only has access to that money when she's around. I would think so. Mm. Otherwise, I don't know, it just feels You're like a You're a little... kept man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He tries to, you know, he's trying to put on airs, but he doesn't have shit in his pockets. So, yeah, so yeah I think we just, I, it's more, I think Carter just wants to go to Vaughn's to like figure out what we're gonna do. It's not like I'm looking for a place to crash. Right, or at least that's I'm your not excuse. sleeping anytime soon. He just wants to bro out. Yeah, <laughs> you, got a, yeah. you got a Nintendo bro? You can yeah. some Smash Bros? <laughs> yes. I'm more of a Sega man myself. Yeah. I think Spider. it does what Nintendo don't. I droll. Yes. Yes, I just like picturing the four of you in one bed, all head to toe. Like, <laughs> right. Sardines. Cap going up sardines and, down. and a cat. <laughs> uh, all right, so you get back to, uh, were you at the Waldorf or one of these yes, fancy the Waldorf Astoria. Yeah. Waldorf Send uh, Astoria. two bottles of gin, uh, right, or, um, or maybe pulling the, the elevator boy aside. You happen to know who could um, spit at two bottles of gin up to my room? There's a good boy. And uh, they slip, slip some money into his jacket. The bellhop nods. Uh... And uh, it's not long before he comes up and uh, he's got some bootleg gin and he uh, gives it to you and looks at this orgy that's about to happen. <laughs> gives you a thumbs up and then leaves. Carter's uh, like, whoa, 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 don't, wait, hold on, sir. Let's get some shrimp cocktails up here. Let's get some uh, Oyster Rockefeller, I think. We need, uh, what else, what else you guys got down? What's the specialty of the house? You know, just give me, bring it all up. Come uh, on. Right away, sir. Right away. Yeah. Yes, um, Yes, uh, finger sandwiches, uh, baked Alaska, uh, send it all. 
All the horrible things that people eat now. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Salad with Jello in it for some reason. (laughs) Oh, I love Jello. Yes, anything, anything you have with Jello in it, and maybe some cheese on toast. Jello and cheese on toast, shrimp cocktail. All right, we'll we'll be right back. And he leaves. Vaughn is uh, beat up from his fall out the fourth story window. you all just have this image of of Jackson, poor Jackson, lying on the floor, intestines strewn about, forehead carved, and maybe it's connected to some Kenyan cult, at least from the symbol on his forehead. And then you think of the headbands that they were wearing and, and just picture the car peeling off. And you just fled the scene of this murder, which... You know, if anyone saw you, it makes you now a, a possible suspect if it gets back to this lieutenant or whoever's investigating the murder. Um, so what's the plan here? What are you guys talking about? Um, uh, I don't know, but I, c- am I able to do some sort of first aid for that's what I was gonna ask. Yeah. 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 Do you have, uh, anybody have medicine or just first aid? I have first aid. That's pretty high. Okay. First aid, if you uh, succeed, it heals one point. Medicine can heal 1d3. Oh, I'm not very good at medicine, but I'm good at first aid. Yeah, well, anybody hey, else is good at medicine? One point in. is pretty good. I got a you one. You know what? I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm going to wing it. I have winged it on a one before and made it. So Do I'm it. just going to try my best. Okay. I really want to help you out. <laughs> to walk you through this, to be effective, first aid must be delivered within one hour. And right. We'll say, we'll say that for, for argument's yeah. sake. Uh, in which case, it grants one hit point recovery. It may be attempted once with subsequent attempts constituting a pushed roll, which uh, uh, two people can work together to administer first aid with a Ooh. success granted if either one of them rolls a success. An exception is allowed when treating a dying character wherein the best that can be achieved with first aid is to stabilize the patient. He's obviously not mm-hmm. dying. Um, medicine I, uh, takes a little longer, but you can do better. It might be I relevant. rolled a 13 under 40, which yep, is a hard notice. success. Great. Ooh, all right. Um, all right, so you get one hit point back for now. Um, obviously, you're going to need, uh, if you want to recover those other hit points, you're going to need a, a doctor or somebody trained in medicine, um, which is mm-hmm. something you'll want to take care of when, when you want to. If you're like, ah, I'll be fine, you know, you're going to be down those other two hit points until you take care of that. Yeah, with my medicine roll, I kind of look you up and down, take a sip of the martini I just made, and go, you'll be fine. I don't see anything wrong with you. <laughs> walk it and, off. And, uh, yeah, and, and maybe Vaughn is kind of like in his in his like singlet undershirt now, just kind of looking at us like, actually, it doesn't look too terribly bad. And then he turns around, and his back is just one enormous purple bruise. Oh, it's just getting <laughs> oh. like per- darker by the minute. Yeah, you hit. Here you hurts. go, smoke is- have a cigarette, it'll make you feel better. Yes. The revivifying effects of tobacco will uh, do right. their work. <laughs> There's nothing damaging about cigarettes. Nothing at all. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> rejuvenating. Mm. Ah, love ah. the stuff. Here, here's, mm. here's a martini, too. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Drinking the one Good for the liver, I always say. Yeah. And this so. cocktail sauce has heroin in it. <laughs> mm. Don't tempt me with a good humors. time, killing half. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I think we should. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call Harvard. I'm gonna call that woman. Well, this this uh, if if I remember correctly, that letter it's from a New York office. Yes, perhaps we could go to that Prospero Publishers and um, see if we can get a line on what, uh, what whatever Jackson might have been up to. Yeah, and we got this license plate that we almost have filled in completely, right? We could. Harris? I don't know if you have any other contacts that would help us out with that, perhaps. Uh, if they're illegal, yes. Maybe, Maybe. there's some way to research a legal driver's registration department. The DMV. I can just roll into the DMV, charm whoever's in there. It's going to be great. <laughs> roll into the DMV. Um, yeah, so you got a couple leads. Obviously, it's it's late at night now. Uh, it's, it's probably 9, 9.30, almost 10 o'clock, so... There's not a whole lot you can do other than just uh, sit and stew on this. Right. Um, so eventually you you guys, I don't even know if you sleep, if you can sleep. Uh, uh, you know, 
Get some rest, drink you, some gin, smoke some cigarettes. You gin drink your way gin. to sleep. <laughs> yeah. It's on a phonograph or whatever the fuck they were yeah. right, rocking back then. <laughs> These are the black eyed peas. <laughs> we're all gonna die someday. <laughs> in my drunken stupor before I, I fall asleep, I turn to Beirut and go, You shot at someone today. Our first day. We just, guns were blazing. Oh, God. And she like nods off. <laughs> Vaughn falls out the window. Fear <laughs> <laughs> uh, is at this point who's never been a smoker has two cigarettes in each hand. Just <laughs> yes, yeah, so I just all of this fuckery is just has me stressed. And uh, you see Vaughn like opening. He has like a copy of um another oh, a copy of uh, uh Jackson's most recent book. Signed, and he's kind of like, he's hoping to get another inscription. Yeah, we'll find those damn scoundrels. Yeah, Carter's Carter's sloppy, sloppy drunk at this point. It's like he didn't even get to read my manuscript. He said he was gonna, do, and he he pulls out from his like bag this thick. It's it's clearly like a first novel. You know how you have friends who are like. I'm a writer now. And you're like, but you never took uh, creative writing in your life, that type of uh, vibe. And it's just and yet, massive. <laughs> yeah. And yet they still want you to read it. And they still yeah. want you to read it and they won't uh, ever give up. Uh, regardless, uh, follow your dreams. So it <laughs> has a thick book of pages and you guys can see like hand scrawled on it and also terrible penmanship, by the way. Uh, it says like, The Adventures of Carter Tilling Hast. And the and his cowardly friends. But then you see, <laughs> but then you see cowardly friends is like crossed out, and it's like, and his three nervous compatriots. And then you see that's crossed out, and you just see and his good pals. Aww. Like over the years, he's changed it, <laughs> and he's just like, there's just te- now there's like teardrops <laughs> falling on it through the one hole in his mask. And he's like, he's just, he said it was had promise. He just had to follow a three act structure. <laughs> My God, are you saying that Jackson Elias read that thing? No, he just true pitched friend it to indeed. him. Indeed, I soft pitched it to him. I, mm. you know, you I, still have your chance. Yeah, well, you can only talk on the phone for like a minute or two. It costs so much money. <laughs> you guys eventually drink, smoke, and shrimp cocktail yourself to sleep. <laughs> uh, Pull one out for our homie. <laughs> whoever. <laughs> Uh, wakes up first the next morning, Friday, uh, January 16th. Um, wakes up to the sound of a thud uh, at the door. Go over the door, you open the door, and you see the New York Times um, sitting there. Mm. And it catches your eye that right on the cover uh, is an article about uh, Jackson. I'll show to you right now. Oh no. Uh, Nora, you want to give that a read? <laughs> Certainly. Author murdered by usual killers. Body found in Hotel Chelsea, possible connection to Harlem murders by Rebecca Schossenberg. Manhattan, New York, January 15th. Author Jackson Elias has been found murdered in his Chelsea hotel room. The killers are reported to have used long knives to butcher the victim. Lieutenant Martin Poole of the Murder Squad, the Murder Squad, the Murder Squad stated that he is exploring possible connections between the murder and similar slayings in Harlem last year. Local resident Hilton Adams was convicted of the Harlem murders in October last and and is awaiting execution in Sing Sing. Lieutenant Poole offered no opinion whether this new murder indicates that Adams and accomplices or it or that indicates that Adams had accomplices or is innocent of earlier crimes. Interesting. Just the idea that in the newspaper offices, every single journalist is walking around talking like, hey, you got that article done? I sure did. What's going on? Get in here right now. I sure did, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> buddy, don't, don't call, call me buddy, me buddy pal. pal. <laughs> Front page news that Possibly Elias's murder is linked to uh, 
murders in Harlem, in Harlem um, hmm. where someone was arrested and f- uh, is now awaiting execution uh, in Sing Sing Prison uh, up in Westchester. And there's also a listing for Jackson's funeral, which will take place at Cypress Hill Cemetery in Brooklyn at 2 p.m. tomorrow. Interesting. Yeah. We should go to that. Perhaps we yeah, split good. up. Two of us can go to the funeral to see if there's any suspicious people. And perhaps two of us can go to this prison and see if we can see if this sing sing songbird sings. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. You've got some leads. You have some things to kind of look through. Everything is a clue. But you also have a dead friend. And we will pick it up there next week. Jackson Elias, we hardly knew you. All right, Jackson. Me. Sorry, Mr. Jackson. I am for real. I am soon. so dead. <laughs> Never meant to make your car to cry. I tried to catch them and I almost died. <laughs> <laughs> Poor dead guy. Oh. We're back, baby. <laughs> <laughs>